uh, to enqueue any assets in the front end and enqueue block editor assets to enqueue anything in the back end editor. So that's your PHP file. What it basically what it does is it, it loads all the, your assets to the front end and back end. And this is how your first block is going to look like. Uh, so then everything, everything is in JavaScript is an object, such is true for Gutenberg as well. Every editor, sorry, every block can be represented in a block. So what you do is you, imp you import the register block type function and you register your block. Uh, there are two parameters to give to this function. The first one is the name. A name, a namespaced name. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm going to run through a basic example that displays a welcome message in our webcam KL website, and how I can uh, extend that to incorporate more and more features. So uh, there are a couple of options you need to. That's mandatory, and there are a couple of them are optional. For example. A description for the block is optional, and an icon is optional. I keep uh, giving keywords so that can be used when they when someone searches the block. In, that's optional. So you have to define a title, a category, and there are two functions you have to de define. One is the edit function and the save function. So what the edit function does is. Uh, whatever you define inside, it will display in the editor, and the same function, whatever you define in the same function will be displayed in the front end. So I have a slide here, for example, you can see I'm displaying uh, uh, what displays in the editor and what displays in the front end, two messages. So if you insert that block in the editor, you can see how, it, how the display element varies from the block end from the back end and the front end. So what displays in the editor is being displayed in the Gutenberg editor and the front end display is different. So that's the maybe a hello world or a very basic block you can start your development. So I'm going to extend more on this. So these are two static, uh, this is a static block. It displays a message. So I want to modify this to display what I give as an input. Uh, yeah, so this is the block preview and in Gutenberg when you go to this uh, hamburger selector and when you see the code editor, it displays what is going to be displayed in the front end. So internally what Gutenberg does is when you type something, it converts what is going to be displayed in the front end and it's, it holds it as an object and when the time comes, it save it in the back end as well. So you can see the differences here in the front end and back end. Uh, so uh, I mentioned earlier I want to introduce an input so I can type in a welcome message and display to the user. So that's where the block attributes comes into play. Uh, it's basically defined, can be defined as a state of a block. Uh, uh, Make the properties of the blog. Okay, let's make the text editable. So I want to, rather than displaying a static message, I want to give you an input so you can type in whatever you want to display. So uh, this is how it's going to it's going to look in the editor. The text is now editable, and this is the code for that. So uh, what? What you have to do is you have to introduce an app. So you can see uh, the title and the category element for. I just uh, interrupt you for a quick moment. The, we have put the slides on the WordCamp KL website. So if you want to find Prasa slides so that you can see the, the code, then you can go to uh, 2018.qualitymodel.org and you can find the slides. Okay, thanks. Ed. So the title and the category was uh, from the basic block. I'm, I'm introducing here an attribute here. So I'm calling it as a content. And here I'm defining a couple of properties that describes the attribute. Well, for example, it's of type string. And the source of the attribute is 
uh, there's a selector, so I'm, uh, I'm passing a custom class as a selector, and the source of the attribute is going to be what's inside that selector. So that's what meant in this attribute property. And here, and I'm modifying the edit and the save function uh, to accommodate the new input tricks. For example, uh, in the edit function, I'm introducing an uh, input field. And in the save function, I am displaying the what is being inputted in the input field. And when you when you type some, something, I have defined an on change event that will set the attribute, the new attribute uh, for this block, and it displays it in the save function. So whenever you type in hello world camp KL, it's uh, it, it's being uh, converted into save block and. It, it's displayed in the back end markup. So uh, that's on the right side you see the basic block we have created earlier, and your left side the new block that introduces an input feed. Uh, so next I'm going to talk about uh, block controls and inspector control. Uh, that's the next step of uh, Google development. So when you define a block or you want to create a new custom block, there are a couple of uh, inbuilt features in Gutenberg that you can use. For example, uh, when you select your block, an inspector controls will be displayed in the right side, and a list of block controls will, will be displayed in at the top. For example, this is a heading block, and if I select the heading block, there are a couple of options from the heading block. For example, I can define which edge tag I want to use, and I, I can uh, define the text alignment for the heading, and there are a couple of options in the top as well. So these are both block controls and inspector controls. Uh, so I, I'll show you an example. Uh, let's add a color picker for the our welcome text. Uh, so I have added, so this is how it's going to be displayed in the Gutenberg editor. So I'm, uh, if, if for our basic ex example block, I have added a color picker that, so that I can change the color of the text. So this is the code uh, to how to do that. So the difference here from the previous code block is I'm, I'm, in, I'm introducing an inspector control element and putting whatever I want inside that so it, I, it get displayed in the block uh, inspector. So I, I'm introducing a color input, and uh, I'm defining an, another attribute for this block uh, called color, and I'm saving the attribute whenever it's changed from the inspector control. So let's look at behind the scenes what's happening. So when you go to your code editor and when you see what's being saved in the back end, you notice something different from the previous slide. Uh, the color is being saved as a uh, limited element inside the comment. So the difference of why it's happening here is uh, here you have uh, defined a selector for the content attribute, but for the color you haven't defined a selector. So what uh, Gutenberg does is it, it saves the message inside the command delimiter. So everything uh, in the Gutenberg editor, every block will be uh, saved inside these wrapping comments uh, that, that uh, tells the Gutenberg that this is a separate block so that every time the page is loaded, it passes it and this page is in the editor correctly. So next I'm going to run through a couple of Options in the PHP API you have. Uh, so, as I mentioned before, Gutenberg is completely JavaScript based, but there are options in the PHP side you can pass along to a block. For example, block templates. Uh, so, if you define a custom post type, let's say speaker, and you want to define a couple of elements that's needed for the speaker, for example, I need a profile picture. I need a text and I need a description for the speaker. I can define it as a block template. So this is the code uh, on how to do that. Um, so if you're a WordPress developer, you're mostly familiar with this code. 
you register a poster inside the init action. And uh, there, uh, so the new parameter here is the template. And you define uh, three blocks that it's a ma must, that all the speakers must have. And there's a new parameter as well, it's called template lock. So when you define this, there is no, no other blocks can be added to that poster. So this is how it's going to look in the back end. You need a title and description and an image as well. Uh, next thing, we are going to look at the register block type function. That's the new PHP function to define a couple of properties of a custom block. First, you have the render callback argument. So in our previous uh, slide, uh, in our previous slide, uh, when, you, when you register a new block here, there are two functions you have to pass. One is the edit function, uh, which describes what's going to be displayed in the editor, and the save function, which describes what's going to be displayed in the function. So let's say these are static blocks, and let's say you have a latest post type uh, custom block, and you're not sure uh, what to display in the front end, and it's going to be defined when the page loads. Uh, you can use this uh, render callback function. So for what it does is, if you have defined a render callback function for a custom block, it uh, like it overrides the JavaScript save function and use this to display what's in the uh, what's going to be displayed in the front end. For example, I'm returning a simple string that hello world can care, and the string is generated from PHP. Uh, the next set of parameters you can use with register block type is the editor script and editor style. So rather than enquiry your assets for front end and back end, you can define the, the custom handle for your ja uh, JavaScript file and the style sheet. And this function will take care of uh, loading these in the necessary places. Uh, the next thing I'm going to quickly run through is uh, go to plugins. So we have a custom block that displays custom message for and the input and we have an option to add uh, to set the color of the text as well but uh, I want to add a sidebar in the Gutenberg editor that displays some information about word can create so I can look at that. So this is how you do that. Uh, this is the function is provided by Gutenberg. Uh, it's called register plugin. Uh, it's simple as register block type. You have to pass a name and an object that has an icon property and a render property. So what is rendered, uh, what it renders is uh, the date of WordCamp key. And you can see, so for an icon, I'm passing as smiley, and you can see how it's displayed in the Gutenberg editor. and. Uh, what you pass inside the plugin sidebar will be displayed in the plugin. And what you pass inside the more menu item will be displayed here. So you can select and deselect the display of the plugin. Uh, the next thing I am going to run through is Gutenberg books. I'm sure most of uh, your developer, most of you is familiar with WordPress books. That's the building, the base for extending WordPress and they have introduced the same con concept for Gutenberg as well. So this is the book's API for Gutenberg. So looking at these, uh, you can identify a lot of familiar functions, add, add filter, add actions, or remove filter and remove actions. Uh, these are same for PHP and it behaves in a similar manner in Gutenberg as well. So, so let's say uh, I, I have a custom custom blog that displays a welcome message that's been written by some other developer. And I want to control some of the attributes of it. For example, if someone types a welcome message, I want to remove the spaces in the front and in the back as well. I want to trim them. So that's where the filter function comes into play. 
So this is a registered filter, blocks dot get save element. What it does is uh, when you edit when you edit a block and it's before it's going to save in the back end in the save object, you run through this filter so you have the option to modify the property. For example, I'm using this filter to pass it to a function called trip trim content and what I get I get the content attribute and I trim it and I return back the element. Gutenberg uh, uh, comes with a lot of components. For example, uh, in, in my um, in my the block I have walked through that displays a welcome message uses simple HTML elements, but Gutenberg comes with a lot of pre-built element as well. For example, there is an input component. For the color picker, you can use the color palette component. And there is much more you can, if you go to the, their GitHub page and see their source code, you can see all the components inside packages component. Uh, this, this is the last thing I want to talk about. Uh, so setting up your development environment for Gutenberg. So I would highly recommend uh, there is a GitHub project called Create Guten Block uh, by Ahmed Weiss, I think. So uh, it works uh, similarly for Create React, similar to Create React App, if you are familiar with that. So what it does is uh, you have to install that, and if you give a, a, a name for your block, it will generate all the necessary assets and the build scripts and the configuration for that. So you can straight away dive into the block development. Otherwise, you have to uh, enqueue your assets and be a, configure your webpack file and maybe configure uh, the ES6 transpilers before you can actually ta start your development. So if you are not familiar with all those things, uh, you can ch use this create root and block to create the uh, block and dive into development right away. Uh, the second thing I would advise is uh, always uh, set up the Gutenberg uh, from the working copy from GitHub. Uh, not to don't install the plugin from the plugin repo because it comes with all the build files. So if you if you are writing a block and you want to figure out what's going wrong and you want to look at the source code, it doesn't provide the source code. Uh, the third thing is always try to use a modern. JavaScript, uh, ES6, uh, it, it's better. Uh, always output the original source to the front end. For example, if you are using Webpack, maybe you can use uh, the dev tool parameter as event source map that will output the original front end code. And uh, use uh, breakpoints to debug and learn uh, console log. Using console log is very slow. So you who still use console log for JavaScript development, it's very slow. So uh, if you want, especially if you want to get used to the internet. And the last thing is, uh, it's very new to me, like after I finished the presentation, uh, one of my uh, co-worker has set up module replacement in Gutenberg. So in the core project, they still don't have HMR, but if you can create a config file that that will enable you to use HMR. I'm sure if you are from a React background, you have, you'll be very familiar with HMR. If you set up a Create React app, it will automatically come with HMR developer. So what, uh, if you are not familiar with HMR, it's like when you edit a file and save it, it quickly loads the module in the front end and display all the changes. So if you are in a traditional environment, you have to reload the page. So I, I have a screenshot of my development environment, which is how I use uh, to develop a Gutenberg. So here you can see, uh, so in Chrome, uh, if you go to the page tab, it displays, it will display all your files in source mode if you use, if you output the original source. Uh, and you can, uh, set debug points as well. And uh, when you when you start, uh, so I'm using JetBrains PHP Chrome for this. I'm sure most of the modern IDs have, have the same features. 
So I have installed the Chrome extension for JPEX and started the listener here. And if I set a breakpoint, uh, let's say the trim content method, and I want to see what's being passed to this function, I can uh, see this here in the inspector, and I can also see this here in the Chrome inspector as well. And here you can see the call step. So remember earlier I mentioned to use Gutenberg from the from GitHub and not to use the plugin because uh, it will enable you to see the source of Gutenberg as well. And you can, uh, let's say it's, it's calling trim contract and you can see the previous function and the previous function and see how Gutenberg actually passes your content before passing into books. So if you, if you have developed with PHP, uh, I'm sure you are familiar with Xdebug and how it uh, helps you to debug most of the backend stuff. Uh, you can do these two things in JavaScript as well. So I, I took this screenshot because for a long time I was using console of development and I found it really time consuming. Uh, so that's all I have for today.